In 2009, astrophysicist Matthew Bales saw something unusual during his daily space observation. Suddenly, he saw a planet that was 3,000 times bigger than the Sun, but was still revolving around its Sun. Mind-blowing, right? 3,000 times bigger than its star. But wait a minute. How can a planet be this big? According to the principles of physics, such a big star will produce so much gravity that it will collapse in itself and become a star, right? But this is still a planet. And secondly, the gravity of such a huge planet will be such that it should rotate its sun around it, not vice versa, right? But it is rotating around its own star like all other planets. How is this possible? Well, you won't believe it. But there are such mind-blowing planets in the universe that you wouldn't have even imagined. For example, let's talk about another planet, which was completely swallowed by its own host, but it escaped from it and came out. And not only that, there is also a planet that revolves around a black hole rather than around the sun. But is all this scientifically even possible? Well, let's find this out in our today's video. So, before starting, after seeing all these observations, it seems that the knowledge of the fundamentals of our science do the theories we have created really work. If yes, then how do these exceptions come in those theories? Or do they fall within the theory itself? Well, that's what we will learn today. So first of all, let's start with our first planet. The small shining thing in it is the sun and the big thing next to it is the planet. And you won't believe it, but the planet of this planetary system, PSR J1799 1438b, is 3000 times bigger than its host star. And this is proved. But what's even more surprising is that the planet isn't made of stone. Instead, it's made of diamond. Shocked? And what's even shocking is that this planet wasn't a planet from the beginning. In fact, it was a star in the beginning. A yellow dwarf star. This star, along with time, changed into a planet. Which is weird, right? Now the question here is that, if stars end, they become Noah or supernova or hypernova or black hole, right? If it's a small star, then it's a white dwarf. Or if it's bigger than that, then it's a neutron star. So how did this star become a planet? Well, the reason behind this planet's condition is its host star. The planet this planet is orbiting around is a neutron star, meaning a dead star. Now here you will see a brilliant thing of nature. A neutron star may be very small in size, but its mass is more than 1.5 times that of the sun. Actually, there was a time when this dead star was also a massive star. But due to a violent explosion, it converted into a neutron star. And with its host star, it revolved in a binary system. That is, both revolved around each other. And this is the reason why this planet was able to endure that supernova explosion. Now, after many years, the yellow dwarf itself evolved into a red giant. After which, as obvious, the energy gradually decreased. And this star, red to yellow, and turned yellow into a white dwarf. And now, as we know, the white dwarf star is made up of carbon, oxygen, hydrogen and helium molecules. But because its host star's mass was more than this, even after it exploded, the gravitational pull of this neutron star pushed the upper layers of our newly formed white dwarf away from it. And after that, strong radiations coming from the host star heated the so-called newly formed star so much that the carbon in it became crystalline or diamond. And hence, this whole planet is a diamond planet. And the size of that planet is 40% bigger than Jupiter. And there you go. This is exactly why PSR J1799 to 1238b looks bigger than its host neutron star. Actually, its mass and density is less than its host star. So, the laws of physics are completely conserved here. You don't need to worry. You should trust your understanding of science. Now you will say, is it necessary to know all this? And I would say yes, because with the help of our past events, we can predict the events in the future and take the necessary steps. Although so much information is in very few people apart from scientists, because we are busy in our own schedule, language barrier comes, or we don't get any reliable source of knowledge. Now let's talk about the next planet, which seems to not follow our laws of physics. 
Obviously, not every planet is so lucky to be able to save itself from supernova. In many cases, the explosion of the massive star of the solar system means the end of all the planets in the solar system. But quite surprisingly, some planets are so stubborn that even after completely melting away from a dying star, they survive. I mean to enter a star and then come back to life. Well, there is a planet in this universe, Kepler 70b, whose surface temperature is 7389 degrees Celsius. That is, more than 1.5 times the surface temperature of our Sun. So much so that even iron will melt in it. But do you know the reason behind its hot surface? Well, this is the reason why he came out alive inside his host star. Actually, when his host star was changing into a red giant, the gravitational pull of that star pulled the Kepler 70b planet into its radiation layers due to which all the layers of this planet were destroyed and only an iron core was left. But then something magical happened in this case too. As soon as that star died, this planet came out of its radiation layers and survived. But yes, because of the time spent in a dying star, the surface temperature of its iron core has increased by far more than an average star. And this is the reason why the entire surface of this planet is made of molten iron. But on a second thought, just think that by revolving around a star, the condition of this planet has become worse. Now just imagine, if a planet revolves around three stars, what will happen to it? Well, what is the need to imagine? There is a planet in our universe, HD 188753AB, which revolves around three stars. These stars have a binary star system and a normal star. So first of all, let's talk about the first star of this unique system, HD 188753A. This star is a yellow dwarf like our Sun, and around it, planets revolve very closely like our solar system. But the difference is that in this system, planets revolve with a super-fast revolution of 3.3 Earth days. Now let's move on to our binary star system, HD 188753b and HD 188753c. No planet revolves around these two stars. Rather, these two stars revolve around the planet and the main star. Something like this. Now obviously the star in the center is quite big. That's why other stars are revolving around it. And because those two binary stars are quite close and their mass is also quite similar, that's why they revolve around each other and also revolve around the main star. And this just makes this solar system look so beautiful, right? One planet around one star and two stars revolving around each other, which are also revolving around each other. Well, now look at this. I know, you must be thinking, this is a movie scene. Because how can a planet revolve around a black hole? But such systems have also been discovered by our scientists. According to the National Astronomical Observation of Japan's scientist Keiichi Iwada, there are also such planets in the universe that revolve around supermassive black holes. When Keiichi Iwada and his team were doing research on black holes, they found a huge amount of dust, rocks and gases around a supermassive black hole, from which he concluded that there are chances of 10,000 exoplanets in those rocks and gases, which we are not able to see. And maybe there is a possibility that among those 10,000 planets, there is a planet on which life can evolve. Now you must have seen the movie Interstellar. So if someone goes to a planet near the black hole, then the time for it becomes so slow. So if we get such a planet, can it be used for time travel for the future? Now let's wait a little over here. Is it possible to have a habitable planet around a black hole? I know this question might sound a little baseless. Because when we think of black holes, we think of destruction. But if there is a proper environment and conditions, i.e. heat or light, everything is balanced, then it is possible to form a habitable planet there mathematically. Now the question is, if a black hole doesn't leave light, then how will these planets get light and heat? Well, the science behind this is quite interesting. Listen carefully. So according to scientists, a good environment for planets is not a black hole, but an accretion disk around it. Now, as we all know, accretion disks are made up of many rocks, dusts and gases, which rotate around a black hole at a speed of almost 90,000 kilometers per hour. 
due to which heat is produced and the accretion disk made of this rock starts glowing. Now, if a planet is at a perfect distance from this disk, i.e. the Earth is in the Goldilocks zone of the Sun like today, then it is possible for life to happen on that planet. Because the energy coming from the accretion disk will catalyze anything in the planet to form. But this is one way. But there is another way in which the planets revolving around the black hole can be provided with heat. And that method is CMBR IE, Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation. The first light from Big Bang that even a normal telescope cannot detect. But now the question arises, how will we get heat from that light? Again, like I said, let's keep the normal logic aside for a while. According to Dr. Pavel Bakala of Silesian University, CMBR can be used as a heat source with the help of gravitational lensing. Just like Einstein taught us that the extreme mass of a black hole bends space-time, so the same property of black holes can also work as a lens in this case. What I mean to say is that just like we use a magnifying glass to point all the light of the sun in one direction and produce heat, which can burn a matchstick or paper, just like that, a black hole can produce heat by focusing all the CMBRs. But again, friends, this is just a hypothesis. Scientists have not yet got any proof on this model. But it's totally never say never because this thing can become a possibility in the future. And if you look at science, then every weird possibility is being converted into technology in the future. Definitely, many are being rejected, but many are being accepted as well. So we must keep trying. So, that's it for today, friends. I hope this video showed you another glimpse of the beauty of nature. You know, some of the weirdest things in nature. If you want to learn something new from this, do hit the like button. Subscribe to the Mindful Journey channel and press the bell notification so that you don't miss any of the upcoming interesting videos. See you next time. Till then, as always, stay curious. Keep learning. Bye.